Hi, I'm Stony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. Um, happy 5.0 day. Happy Spider Monkey Day. Uh, whatever you want to call it. I'm glad the daily's finally here. So now, um, the A9 as it was originally delivered to me uh, back in March of 2017 uh, is going to be transformed, hopefully, uh, if we are successful in updating our firmware. A few things I want to mention before we begin the actual firmware update. Number one, you have to have a computer that is powered with a power supply. Don't try to do it on the battery even if it's full, it's just not a good idea. Um, secondly, it's essential that you have a brand new battery, fully charged, 100% in the body before you do a firmware update. So I've already done that, I'm going to set that one aside. Third, uh, it's always best to have the original uh, cord that came with your A9 uh, when it came out of the box to use for the update. Uh, like most photographers, I can't find mine, so I'm hoping this one will work. I'm not sure if it will or not, but we're going to find out. So this is a real, like, we're really going to do this. <laughs> now, I'm a Mac user. Um, typically, uh, Sony is about one generation behind an OS. Maybe they won't be this time. I'm hoping not, so we'll see. But this one, uh, this little airbook is um, not the latest OS. And I've been saying tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow for the last two months, waiting for this firmware update, hoping that that will be enough to get it in. If you're using the most recent uh, OS with Mac, you may have difficulties. You may have to go find some with a PC or use an older machine uh, that you haven't turned on in a while to get this to work. But hopefully Sony's got that figured out too. We'll, we're going to find out. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the, the uh, firmware update in the computer. Now, I've already done that, um, and it's kind of silly for me to, um, to do that in front of you, I think. So um, we're going to, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to just get into my computer here. All right, I'm in my computer. So now I have, as you can see, my computer is open. Um, it's very important that you turn off every single piece of software that you might have on. Uh, so you look in your toolbar below, make sure like this simple note is on. So I'm going to quit that. My mail is on. I'm going to quit that. It's so important to do this. Um, you really can't have anything else happening. Um, in there, there can't be any applications open at all. So I'm going through and even Spotify is off, which is rare for me because Spotify is usually on all the time. All right, so as far as the computer goes, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to go. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the uh, downloads. Okay, now uh, the next thing is the camera has to be set for mass storage. USB, it's in a USB setting, it must be set to mass storage. That's incredibly important as well. The mass storage setting is in the suitcase uh, and it's in 3.7, so suitcase 3.7, that's where it is. It says USB connection and it must be set to mass storage. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and double click the update. It's opening the update and I get this screen. In resources, uh, it says system software updater. Open. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, complete the following procedures to connect the update to target camera to the computer with a USB cable. Turn on the camera. Okay, select USB connection from the camera's menu screen and verify connection is set to mass storage. We did that. Connect the camera to the computer with the USB cable. We did that. Click the next button when the connection has been made. Now we've already made that connection, so I'm gonna hit next. Now it says verifying the connection of the camera. Verify the version of the update information on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Uh, if there's no problem with the version, click the next button it is impossible to cancel the update from this point forward. Now, what's happening here is my current version of my update uh, is 3.01, and I want to go to 5.0, and that is correct. So I'm going to hit Next. Okay, now here's where 
It's automatically resetting the camera. I just heard the, uh, the uh, IBIS move. I think it shut it off and now it's, now you'll notice that there's a steady red light on, on the A9. So this is, it is actually updating right now. It is essential not to move anything. Um, a big no-no uh, for doing an update with anything Sony, uh, whether it's a camera or a lens, is to sit on a couch with your laptop in your lap and have the camera laying next to you and you're moving and maybe you cross your legs or you don't, bad idea. Everything must be completely stopped, just like this. Um, so uh, now I'm getting a little bit of VAR. So I see on the very screen there's a tiny, tiny bit of green here, which means it's starting the update. Um, I should have run a timer on it to see exactly how long it's going to take. I'm going to actually pull my phone out and just uh, do that really quick because I'm just curious uh, to see what it, what it ends up doing. I'm going to add a minute to whatever this is and we'll just see. We'll see what it is. So this is the part that's kind of boring, um, but it's kind of cool. So <laughs> while we're waiting, um, what I want to do is uh, talk to you a little bit about what this update might mean. What this 5.0 or what I call spider monkey, what does it actually mean to photographers? Um, I believe that the Sony's already made a bunch of different statements. Number one, they built the A9, which is off the chain still, even though it's like, you know, almost two years old at this point. Number two, um, they have built the camera in such a way that it's possible to do this right now. Meaning that when they built it, they probably knew that they were going to have this update available at some point in the future, but they made the hardware first, um, but they made it in such a way that there was enough room in it, enough speed in it, enough computing power to be able to update the camera in the future multiple times. I think this is the eighth update. I'm not positive about that, but I think this is the number eight firmware update since the A9 first came out. This one is significant though, and it's different because it's gonna change many of the operations of the camera. It's gonna add all kinds of value to real photographers, especially people that shoot sports portraits, birds in flight, anything moving. This is a big deal. Um, the other part that people are, I think, going to miss is the, the added capability for video. Now that this tracking feature is going to be active for not just stills but for video, it is going to really change the capability of the A9 across the board for video projects. Um, I'm in particular, I'm really excited about using it for doing kind of features on an individual player, say at a football team, like a running back or a quarterback. Um, the the real-time tracking feature is going to allow me to key on one athlete surrounded by other athletes in action. And that's going to really be important. Uh, it's going to change the way that you're going to be able to do uh, sporting event coverage for sure. Um, but really, it's going to reach into every aspect of photography, whether you shoot tabletop, whether you shoot street photography, whether you do portrait and wedding all the time, it doesn't matter. Uh, it is gonna really be phenomenal uh, and it is gonna be a game changer. So we're just checking back in. Uh, we're at about four minutes right now. Our green bar is probably maybe a sixth across the way. You know, who knows? Uh, it's gonna take a while. The, the update itself is 297 megabytes in size, which is quite a lot to put through a small cable, a small USB cable. So, um, but it would be really interesting to be able to be inside that camera right now um, and to see what's happening. Um, I mean, kind of silly sentiment maybe, but it's just weird because I'm about to get a new camera. Um, I'm gonna get an A9 version two um, without paying for it, which, I kind of dig that, not having to pay for stuff. I'm cheap, what can I say? All right, so um, going back to the 5.0 update and what it means to photography and photographers especially, I think that the, the update itself is going to be revolutionary 
across the board. Because Sony has created this real-time tracking feature, everybody else is going to try to attempt to copy it. And eventually they'll figure it out. I don't know how long it will take them, but eventually they'll figure it out. Just like they're figuring out how to do IAF now, um, even though Sony's had it for, I think, since 2010, 2009. Um, pretty amazing. But I think that this artificial intelligence uh, taking over autofocus is real. Um, I have only been able to shoot with this camera with the 5.0 update back in uh, January with Brian Smith. I only got to do that for a couple of hours and we were in a controlled situation. We couldn't take the cameras outside even though I begged to do that. Um, I do think that I got enough of that experience to tell me that this is going to be the way of the future. It's very possible that for 95% of my work, I will use tracking all the time. I mean, I think that's real. I shoot people, okay? I shoot people in sports action. I shoot people in portrait and wedding situations. I do photojournalism, which involves people, obviously. All those things, I can't see where the real-time tracking feature is not going to work for me. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm very excited. Um, and I'm also going to be excited to get this feature in my A7R 3 and my A7 III as well, eventually. But for right now, it's going to be A6400 and A9 only. Uh, and how cool is it that they put it in the A6400 in a camera that costs 900 bucks? Uh, that you could go out and buy a $900 camera right now that will do the same thing that a $4,500 camera does with all this heady stuff going on. It's, it's pretty cool. All right, our bar is nearing a third, and I've got about eight minutes so far on the update. Um, so we'll see. Okay, for whatever reason, the green bar, um, once it gets to about three quarters, it starts moving really fast. And it's, it's cranking over there pretty well. You can see it here. Um, we're about uh, 11 minutes, 15 seconds right now. And it looks like it's going to finish pretty quickly. So we're going to see what happens when it finishes. And it should let me just click on finish, and that's it. And then we'll check the body to make sure it is the correct uh, firmware, which I think it will be. So let's see here. All right, green bar is almost done. Okay, now it, it stopped a little bit at the end, doing something. Um, okay, now it's done. Red light is off, just went off. It says the update process has been completed, and I'm going to hit finish. Uh, so I'm going to click on finish right here. And that's that. So it took about 12 minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the camera and um, it has completely reset. So this is like now it's like out of box. It's set to English and now I'm going to have to go through and enter the date and time. And obviously by default that means that all, all of the custom functions that I've set are gone. The camera has been completely wiped clean. Um, and I'll be able to go in and do all my settings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the last part of the update, um, there's lots of new menu items. I'm not going to go into all those right now. Uh, however, what I am going to do is get the Atomos cranking, and I want to show you how to actually enter into real-time tracking because it's kind of hidden, and it's not obvious where it is right off the bat. And so I kind of want to show you that process. Um, and we'll do that next. So just hold on one second and off we go. So one camera down, two to go. All right, I'm going to hit uh, record now and recording. So sorry about that. I had to go grab a lens and grab my trusty 85-14 G Master, the black hole. Um, okay, so um, it's kind of cool. I'm still in square mode. I didn't realize that. 
Uh, let me open this up a little bit so you can see what I'm seeing. So here we go. So now we're in which mode here? So focus area. So here's where it's going to be when you start out. It's going to be wide. Then you're going to go down. There's zone, center, flexible spot, medium. And then, of course, you can go right and left in this one. I usually use medium, or I used to use medium, I should say. Then we're going to go to expand flexible spot. And then below that, it's not gray anymore like it was last time we looked at it. Now we're in tracking mode. Now it's going to put you into expand flexible spot as a default setting. And what you're going to be able to do is go now right and left in that menu to get to wide. Now, as an example, when you're doing portrait work and you want to use um, IAF, um, you will be able to use this in wide mode. And this is what I do. I will use wide mode. Uh, and you'll be able to use it for all of your portrait work. Um, because even if you only hit the person's body, uh, let's say you hit the midriff section of, of somebody you're shooting, uh, a bride or whatever, it's going to automatically figure out that it's a bride. It's going to figure out where her head is. Then it's going to figure out where her eyes are. And even though, like if I hit the hello, like I'm going to hit the hello thing, so now I've told it I'm, I, I want the, tr the hello to be tracked. So now it's not going to let go of that, even though it's backlit. And that's pretty cool. And even if I go way up here to the corners, it doesn't matter. It's not going to let go. Now, when I lift my finger off and then reacquire, it may grab something else, which it did. So part of this is going to be trying to figure out how to get the camera to do what you want it to do. Um, but if it's a person, it's going to be quite easy to do, to do that. So... Um, so anyway, this is kind of neat. I'm just so excited about the square. I can't tell you. I'm pumped. So anyway, that's it. So, but remember that you are not in tracking unless you are in the very bottom one. So there's wide. You can use zone in tracking. You can use tracking center, tracking flexible spot, small, um, medium, large, expand flexible spot, and wide. So. And, and this one's really, this is like the most brainy the camera can possibly get is this, this mode here. Um, but anyway, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a ton of fun to be able to like go out on assignments now, now that 5.0 is a reality, and to be able to go and just experiment and then see how much tracking I'm going to be able to incorporate into all of my assignments. And I feel like... I think it's going to be a 90% thing. I really do. Now, we'll see. But um, anyway, I just wanted to thank you for watching. I know this is a long video. I try to give as much information as I possibly can um, with a minimum of snarkiness and weirdness, whatever. So I hope this you find it useful. If you do find it useful, please subscribe. Uh, it's important for me to grow this YouTube channel as much as I can. It also helps me get access to equipment to review and then tell you what I think about it before you decide to buy it or not. So that's, that's a big part of what I do. Um, as always, I love your questions and your comments. Um, be kind, be gentle. Um, I'm just one guy with one opinion and one experience of being a shooter for 30 years, but you may have something different than me, but be kind about it, be cool about it. Um, and uh, let's dialogue and learn from each other. Thanks so much. I'm Sony Artisan Patrick Murphy Racy. Uh, signing off with day one of firmware 5.0 in the A9. Thank God it's finally here. Appreciate it. See ya.